guys and gals, and every here from Drake Wing Gaming, and sending me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of Beasts of the Thorns. So let's go ahead and jump into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Alrighty. <clears throat> I helped load all three of our bags into Ostrom's car. Oh, that's great! Surprisingly, not only was it possible to fit all the luggage in the car, but it was also possible to fit all four of us in the car without any congestion. As we waited for everyone to be seated, uh, Ostrom skillfully started the car and increased the speed while explaining the admission procedures. And perhaps because of Ostrom's approachable demeanor, we relaxed and interacted with him, and we dared to ask any trivial questions, and he always answered them in a pleasant manner. You'll have to report to the administrative unit first, and I'll take your luggage to the dormitory for you. And normally, we assign dormitories based on the race of the magical creature, but considering Hess, you had... But considering, Hess, you haven't adapted to your, our environment yet, we've arranged for you to live in the same building as your friends. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, the three of us looked at each other and laughed. There may be some basic physical exams done because we have many races, some of which are similar in appearance but very different in nature, which can cause medical distress. The inspection is not invasive and the cost is covered by the school, so there's no need to worry. Speaking of which, we finally left the side road with Ostrom executing a magnificent drift turning left onto the main thoroughfare. Even though there were no cars on the road, I was beginning to think that this speed was a bit of a bad idea. I scrambled to look out, out the window for a speed limit sign, but sadly saw nothing. My blood pressure and heart rate kept rising with the speed of the car. Oh god. Senior Ostrom, red light! You ran a red light! He continued to chatter incessantly, completely ignoring what color the traffic signals were. Uh, you can come directly to me if you need anything. I'll be working in the student union after school. I'll give you my phone number later, and you can call me any time during the day. I couldn't concentrate to listen to Ostrom explain various precautions. Why can he casually give explanations while speeding? I saw him smoothly maneuver past a pedestrian holding a pizza box. Wait, did our car just go airborne? I'll be around most of the time. Ostrom caught a glimpse of, Amor, of, Amor, of Amora curled up in the ball in a passenger seat. Oh god! It seems like Amora is feeling dizzy. I'm really sorry, I might need to increase the speed a bit. The school has a clinic that can help him. No! I'm fine! Just as if waking from a deep dream, a more promptly uh, voices protest. You're driving, Mr. Senior. Concentrate. Slower would be better. Well, faster? Okay, alright. I guess if we have to. It's a relief for Chris and, uh, that I, and I that someone finally said it. This is half the speed I normally drive. Ostrom eased off the gas slightly. Uh, we're not in a hurry. God, Jesus! Light sp war speed, Mr. Zulu! But I don't want to keep the adorable junior schoolmates waiting too long. You still have a lot of enrollment procedures to handle. Then, Ostrom asked nicely, Did you eat breakfast? As he spoke, he pushed the gas pedal to the floor and we stared at him in despair with pointers that were about to pop through the dashboard. I was screaming inside, I don't know what you're talking about! It's only a ten minute drive, but it feels like an eternity! Ostrom ran a few more red lights, flashed a few passers-by, and at one point drove onto the sidewalk, and I seriously doubt this guy has any concept of so-called traffic rules in his head. Oh my god, thank god, the monster police! Eventually he made it into the campus perimeter after ditching the honking police cars, but I'm guessing at that speed those cops wouldn't have been able to see Ostrom's taillights, let alone the license plate. I sincerely apologize to the police. And then we sped towards the building that appeared to be our... To our appeared to be our destination without slowing down. Austin performed an unnecessary drift and abrupt stop, jerking the car into the parking spot with a deafening noise. After the car rocked to a halt from the inertia, our deal finally came to an end. Ah! Ostrom worriedly handed Amor a bottle of water after he ran out the door and started vomiting, and Chris checked to see if I was okay with a miserable look on his face, even though it was very hard to see. Probably because I don't have a vestibular system, aside from a fast heartbeat, I didn't feel dizzy. Uh, why don't you guys take a few minutes off and then go check in, and I'll have someone come and take care of your bags. As well as... Well, welcome to the Outer Limits Academy. God, that was a good show back in the day. The Outer Limits. It's the first time I've seen someone who can smile so brightly and be so, up and so beat up at the same time. Ostrom plans to lead us to the administration building. The student volunteers who were going to transport our bags were already waiting for him by the parking lot. Poor Amora sat on the floor with a blue face and still could not get up. He avoided speaking from the start, communicating with Ostrom only by gestures, seemingly trying to avoid spewing out the contents of his stomach pouch. We took a little more time to catch our breath. After about ten minutes, Amora finally got better. So he began to move, guided by Ostrom, toward the main, toward the administration building. 
Along the way, Ostrom introduced us to the Outer Limits Academy. The Outlander College consists of three main schools, the College of Humanities, the College of Science and Technology, and the College of Business. Each faculty contains many departments, some of which are not found in other schools, such as the most famous philosophy and alchemy. Ostrom was very excited about philosophical, philosophical alchemy, which had been his first ambition, but unfortunately the Ostrom family did not allow him to pursue it. To keep the Ostrom family prosperous, he had to choose majors that would be useful to the family. We wolves are pack animals, after all, and compromises must be made when necessary. But anyone is welcome to join the pack. You'd be surprised how welcoming those guys are. Especially dogs. We welcome any good dog to join us. Chris looked slightly embarrassed at his overzealous senior. I'll give it serious thought when we get settled. Of course, but we can't wait too long, right? It's a tradition at our school that everyone participates in clubs. Socializing is very important to us, and it allows us to build strong bonds across racial lines. We're having a three-day club recruitment event right here in the plaza today, so you can come hang out when you're done. By the way, we're recruiting new blood for our student government and fraternities, so make sure you take a serious, serious look. Amidst pleasant conversation, Ostrom steered us past several tall, Far Eastern Baroque-style buildings, leading us to the front square. Oh, wow! Alright, I'm crossing the plaza as a shortcut to the administration building, but the plaza is so crowded that Ostrom plans to find a way across around the chaos. From a distance, the plaza was filled with magical creatures of all shapes, sizes, races, and shape. All shapes and shapes, okay. More like a carnival than a social enrollment event. A variety of vendors pushing ice cream trucks, hot dogs, and popcorn surrounded the student club enrollment booths, and there were even co corporate recruitment booths mixed in. A stage was set up in the center with a full sound system, and a band of sirens were tuning up were tuning up their instruments and getting ready to perform. The spirit of our friends is lifted. I wish we had time to hang out later. I didn't realize there was so much activity on campus. I thought Outer Limits Academy was just a school in the country, but look at all the stuff here. Maybe we can find a video game club or role-playing club. But I just want to join the Fish and Chips Club now. I'm starving. Uh, you wanna pack something when you- you wanna pack something when you've thrown up your stomach, don't you? Hang in there, we've got admissions to go. We've got admissions to do. Suddenly, Ostrom's angry voice interrupts our concentration. Oh, it's a bat! Eugene, out of respect for your father, withdraw your propaganda. Uh-oh. Ostrom got into an argument with a bat-like creature. Isn't this our president? Are you specifically cutting out the student union meeting to make things difficult for me? The school has already banned your club from enrolling for a year in black and white. This is the second time you've broken the law, and I can't just ignore it. I don't need your permission to do anything, Mr. President. Are you speaking now on behalf of the Scarlet family? Don't talk about my family, Chairman. Then abide by the school rules, unless you want me to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with your father. The bat-like creature referred to as Eugene spat on the ground and instructed his friends to pack up the stall. From a distance, Ostrom seemed to sigh, and then he turned around and came back to us. Uh, looks like you guys are having some trouble. It's okay, he's an old friend of mine. I've known him since I was a kid. His club was banned last year because they got into some trouble. Well, we're like brothers. We used to be really close, but when I grew up, I changed, and so did he. Ostrom's tone is full of frustration. Even so, some things don't change. True, but I can't keep defending him. I have to set a good example as student body president. I'm sure you're doing the best you can. If the Alpha Wolf takes the lead and jumps off the cliff, the whole pack will die with him. I can only do what I have to do. Even if it's not what I want to do. As he was saying this, a petite antlered rabbit lady approached Ostrom and exchanged pleasantries with him. Ostrom nodded and he turned to us and announced, Professor Nicholas said that you don't have to take care of your paperwork personally. Con considering your fatigue from the long journey, you are free to move about as soon as you have had your medical checkups. Ugh, oh, one second, y'all. It is water time. Actually, you know what? One, no, 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 no. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Yeah. All right. Please follow this lady. She will take you to the medical center. You should be hungry. Let me help you find something to fill your stomachs. As he spoke, Ostrom turned and disappeared into the crowd in the square. From afar, his silhouette seemed somewhat forlorn. The antlered rabbit politely guided us toward the administration building. The medical center is on the top floor of the administration building. After taking us to the elevator entrance and pressing the elevator button, the antlered rabbit politely backed away. We rode the elevator all the way to the top. As we stepped out, that's a pretty area. As we stepped out of the elevator, we were greeted by the distinctive smell of sterilized water and alcohol that is typical of a medical facility. 
but the overall decor is vintage, not unlike that of a modern medical center. And although there are signs of wear and tear from years of use, the environment is bright and clean, with sunlight streaming through the inlaid glass windows and creating a soft glow on the polished maple floors. The waiting room doesn't have the, have, doesn't have the posters or decorations of an ordinary medical center, with so many different types of demons. I wonder how the physical exams will go. Demons? Okay, I thought they were monsters. But it seems that there are too few people to examine all three of us at the same time. So while one of us is being examined, the other two will have to wait in, uh, wait in the waiting room. There's a whole row of log chairs along the wall to rest on. Although it's still quite early in the morning, I'm already feeling tired, thanks to that bad ride from my heart. The first one in was Chris, who took almost half an hour to check in. While I was waiting for Chris, I passed the time chatting with Amor. Then it was time for Amor, who pushed open the door to the clinic with a grimace and walked in. Chris sat down next to me read the medical, and read the medical report. No sooner had Amor begun his examination than Ostrom showed up with sandwiches as well as coffee. How was the inspection? Brought you food? Uh, generally normal. There are many types of magical creatures in the canine family, so the inspection took a little more time. Interested in joining our canine fraternity? Ostrom seems to really want Chris to join his fraternity. Uh, we might need to get used to the environment first. Chris looked at me hesitantly. It's okay. I'll give you my number first. We exchanged numbers with each other. Call me any time, except on full moon nights. You know that. I might not be able to resist eating you little cuties. Oh god. Ostrom smiles d dapperly. I'm just kidding. Every night is a full moon night for a pure-blood werewolf. But that old instinct has taken over. I'm just a contagious tame dog. And being bit by a werewolf turns you into a were turns turns you into a werewolf? And nearly immortal. I belong to the Ostrom family, a very pure-blooded werewolf, and as such, I have the ability to heal myself beyond the average werewolf. This includes my familiars as well. Other than that, it's just like any other demon. The days of needing immortality are over. No wonder you drive so recklessly. Ha! You're too bold. No, I also felt like I was about to die. I even saw near-death hallucinations. <laughs> You're also an immortal demon. Huh? Dullahan is a demon that brings death, but is not threatened by death itself. Nothing can kill you. I didn't even know I was such a great character. Ha! Huh. Amor and I are both mongrels. You're the only one with a protagonist aura. Dullahans are very rare. You were the only one in the Outer Realms for the past hundred years. They were scarce in numbers in ancient times. Ancient West as well as wild dryads were in large numbers and thus well integrated into human society. In particular, the fox-type demons are very clever and know how to utilize the mechanisms of human society. So they have gained a high, sta a high status in human society and the establishment of the Outer Realms has been helped by them a lot. However, there are also problems when they are too unique. It's easy for a werewolf to lurk unnoticed in human society. Except for me. We too, we are too powerful to be allowed to leave the Outer Limits. You're the same at this point. It is said that your presence could jeopardize the fragile balance between the two societies, which is why you are being protected so quickly. Protection? You mean banishment? I'm not a rare animal. I can't help but clench my fists. Where am I in danger? My voice is so dry that I don't even recognize it myself. Chris, Chris's tail stood up, and he sensed my nervousness. I was exiled, came here, for, came here like a refugee, just because I am... rare? We magical creatures are few. Then why do I have to leave my old life and come here? Is this what you call protection? Aren't I immortal? What kind of protection do I need? Do you know how I've been looked at? I'm so sorry. I don't want your sympathy. Please let me explain, but it's not you who needs protecting. What? I looked over at Ostrom and Chris, and all I saw was Chris looking at me with wounded puppy dog eyes. Don't look at me like that. Did you know? Dullahan is almost the equivalent of death. Ostrom chooses his words carefully. The target declared dead by Dullahans will surely die, and I am no exception. You can destroy anyone, any organization, even countries if you want to. The mere fact that you're a demon and not a human drives the human race crazy. No one wants to live with a weapon of mass destruction like that. Though you will not die, it does not mean that your spirit will not perish. As soon as the spirit tortures you to the point of collapse, your personality will no longer be complete, and then you are no different from death. Given how dangerous you are, the humans will do everything in their power to get rid of you for their own safety. Therefore, the higher powers believe that it is best for humans or demons to bring you under our protection. I have nothing to say. 
I know the truth, but I don't want to think about it. I've been a human being for 20 years. Why do you think I'm going to kill my own people? Why should I be discriminated against for something I didn't do? All right, I'm going to pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silver, and thank you for above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Zeke. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I shall see y'all in the next video. Bye bye